In this video, we're going to discuss how to actually prepare the financial statements. But to do it, you have to understand definitions and some terminology. So if you haven't done so, watch the previous video on defining assets, liabilities, shareholders' equity, revenues, and expenses. But if you understand those terms well, let's go ahead with this video. And to prepare the financial statements, I always like to do an example. Uh, here's a simple example of uh, a question I might ask in, in one of my classes. And what I'd like you to do is, if you haven't done so, I've provided a link right below this video where you can download uh, this problem and um, you can work through it with me. You can have it on paper and uh, that'll just be helpful, I think, in, in uh, answering the question. But anyway, you can see the question here on the video. Uh, the question says, Fred's tailoring service has the following account balance at February 28, 2012 and for the year they are ended. Uh, utilities expense, supplies expense, and there's a bunch of other accounts. These are completely in random order. I just took a trial balance of the company and randomized it. Uh, it is required. Prepare the company's income statement, statement of retained earnings and balance sheet. Calculate the company's current ratio, debt ratio, and equity ratio. So we're going to learn how to do all of that. This video, though, is all about the income statement. Before we can get to any of these financial statements though, we need to know what we've got. And here's where understanding the terminology comes in. What I'd like to do is I'd like to go through this and list whether each item is an A for asset, L for liability, SE for shareholders equity, REV for revenue, EXP for expense. So I'd like to go down my list and I'd like to kind of classify each one of these items and that's going to help us prepare our financial statements. Uh, so let's start with utilities. Well, it says utilities expense. That's kind of a dead giveaway, but we know utilities are a cost of doing business. And that's, of course, an expense. Supplies expense. Well, supplies can often be an asset, so it's a good thing they noted that it was indeed an expense. Uh, by the way, now might be a good time to pause the video and for you to go through each of these on your own. Uh, the next one is short-term notes payable. And we, of course, know if it has the word payable, that makes for a liability. It's something that we owe. Uh, so I'm going to note that it's a liability, but with liabilities and assets, I'd like to go a little bit further. I'd like to classify them as current or long term. And what I mean by that is current means that it's a liability or an asset expected to be used up within a year or paid off within the year. So for our example of short term notes payable, if it's a, if it's a, it's a debt that I have to pay off within the year, that makes it current. If it's a longer term debt, um, more than a year, that makes it long term. If I have a mortgage, I do have a mortgage, that's going to last me 30 years, that's a long term liability. I also have a phone bill I haven't paid sitting on my counter. That's a current liability. So again, current, short term in nature, long term, obviously more than a year in nature. So when it says short term notes payable, not only is that a liability, that's a current liability. You can see I've noted it as C for current. On to accounts receivable. Accounts receivable, we mentioned anything with the word receivable, very different from the word payable, is an asset. And accounts receivable are in fact a current asset. That's a customer owes us some money, we're expecting to collect it, usually within 30, 60, maybe 90 days, but certainly within a year. If somebody owes you money, you want to get it quickly. Rent expense, well, it's there in the name, it's an expense. Computers are indeed an asset. They're something that's owned and controlled by a company that's good for the company. Those are assets. You might think to yourself, current uh, computers are very short term. You know, I buy a computer, I have to buy a new one soon thereafter. But when a company buys a computer, they expect it to last more than a year. Just as when you or I buy our new MacBook Pro, we think it's going to last more than a year. This is a long term or capital asset. Retained earnings, we said a couple of key shareholders' equity accounts that you just have to remember are retained earnings, uh, common shares, and we said dividends we're going to classify as, as shareholders' equity. It's not technically shareholders' equity, it's an account that affects our shareholders' equity, though. Marketing expense is indeed an expense. Uh, cash is a, an asset. It's the king of all assets. If a company runs out of cash, they're dead meat, and it's a very current asset. It's the most liquid of assets. On to wages expense, that's an expense. Accounts payable, 
well, it's got that magic word payable. It's a liability. Now, if you're thinking current or long term, think phone bill when you think accounts payable. Think short term. Think stuff I've got to pay soon. Uh, common shares, that's shareholders equity. The reason we don't have to classify shareholders equity accounts as current or long term is because they are considered long term in nature. Uh, sewing machines, well, that's an asset, and if I buy a sewing machine, not that I, I sew, but I would think it would last me more than a year. Dividends, we said we're going to classify it as shareholders' equity. I'll put a little asterisk. It's not technically going to be under shareholders' equity in our balance sheet, but uh, it, it affects shareholders' equity, and we'll talk about that in a little while. Tailoring revenue, that's the last line here. Well, that is, in fact, a revenue account. So we've listed all of these accounts, we've classified all of these accounts, now we're ready to make financial statements. The first statement we're going to look at, and in fact the only statement in this video, is going to be an income statement. And an income statement simply does this. It says, let's list our revenues, let's list our expenses, let's take our revenues minus our expenses, and we'll calculate our net income, our profit, our earnings. We'll call it net income. By the way, that's supposed to be two words. My writing is so bad. Um, so anyway, yeah, we'll take our revenues. That's what the company earns. We'll deduct our expenses. That's the cost of doing business. We'll say our revenues minus our expenses is our profits, and we'll call it in this video our net income. So that's going to be our job. That's the job of an income statement. Let's do it and let's format it properly. I'm going to flip over to the next page. Oh, I already started this. I'm going to flip over to the next next page. So before we do any financial statement, we need to uh, do a title. And the title is always going to be a three-liner. The first line of our title is the name of our company. And in this case, our company is called Fred's Tailoring Service. The next line is the name of the financial statement or the name of the statement we're preparing. And we're preparing an income statement. The final line is going to be uh, for the period. So income statements are always for a period. Uh, and we'll talk about why they're for a period at the uh, the very last video or one of the last videos in this series. But right now, just suffice it to say, you're always going to say for the year ended, for the month ended, something like that, for the quarter ended. In this case, though, it's for the year ended. And again, we'll talk about why we say that for income statements and statements of retained earnings, but we'll do that a little later. For right now, for the year ended, and then the date. And it's the date of all of those balances, and that date was February 28th, 2012. I probably should have written out the whole February, but no big deal. Okay, so heading back to my information. Now we said we want to summarize our revenues and expenses. Let's grab our revenues and expenses. First off, there's a, a revenue, tailoring revenue. Let's start with that. Tailoring revenue is 245 grand. And I notice I don't have any other revenues, right? I have these expenses uh, here. I've got this expense. Let's see, another expense there. Another expense there. And I've got the revenue down there. And that's it for revenues and expenses. I have no other missing revenues or expenses. Um, so I only have the one revenue. If I had a list of revenues, I'd, I'd format this a little bit differently. But because I only have one, I'll show you how I'll write that out. So again, let me uh, get my pen tool out here. And I'm going to give a heading here, revenues. And under that heading, I'm going to write tailoring revenue and I forgot the number now our tailoring revenue was two hundred and forty five thousand dollars just there at the bottom okay so our tailoring revenue was two hundred and forty five thousand dollars great now it's time to list our expenses 
let's go to our expenses. Oops, back to the first page. And we've got the five expenses that are highlighted there. So I'm going to uh, uh, start with wages expense and we'll work our way through them. So in terms of expenses, I've got first wages expense. And our company's wages expense was $100,000 even. Now, here's where things get a little bit interesting. When I have a big long list of numbers, I'm going to write them to sort of tabbed into the left here. When I have a total, I'm going to write it out to the right. The reason I wrote tailoring revenue out to the right is because it was my total revenue. I only had the one. If I had a whole long list of revenues, I would have written them all in this area here and then totaled out to there. We'll list our expenses on the left and we'll total them to the right. Your instructor may have a different style that he or she wants. Follow theirs, but this is the style I use and I think it's a good one. Keep doing that. Uh, the next expense we'll look at is supplies expense. I'm going in order from biggest to smallest. Some like alphabetical, some choose different orders based on the uh, chart of accounts. Uh, I'll, I'll just go from biggest to smallest here. So my next biggest is supplies expense. Oh, I gotta stop doing that. And our supplies expense was thirty thousand bucks. Uh, next on the list, let's see, is rent expense at twenty four thousand bucks. So let's fill that one in. I should write out the whole word rent expense twenty four thousand. I'm going to scroll this down a little bit, just a tiny bit. Uh, next up, uh, let's see, we've got utilities expense and last marketing expense. Utilities expense is 22 and marketing expense at 10. Sorry, my penmanship so bad. It's not much better in real life. So, there we have our list of expenses. Now we've got to total it. Our total expenses. Sometimes people don't write the word total expenses. They just write the line and you kind of figure out that that's a total expenses. That's fine. Let's see. It's 130, 154, 170. Uh, 6, 186. Hope that's right. 186,000. Our revenues were 245. We've said the, the income statement is all about revenues minus expenses. 245 minus 186 is going to give us our major total here, our net income. 245 minus 186 is. I hope I'm right. $59,000. Shouldn't do math in my head. Should have calculated this before. I hope it's right. Uh, this is a total. It's called our net income. Because it's the bottom line of the financial statement, because it's such a key line, we underline it twice. So, zooming out a little bit. We've got our revenues minus our expenses equals our net income. You can see this company made $59,000. One final note, some profs are sticklers for this. Generally speaking, you put the dollar signs at the top of any column. So there's my uh, revenues column, at the top of this expenses column because it's a new column, and then certainly at the bottom line of the financial statements. Again, I've seen different conventions, but that's a good rule of thumb. Top of any column, bottom line of the financials. Zooming back out even further, We've got ourselves a good title here, Fred's Tailoring Service, income statement for the year ended February 28, 2012. We've listed our revenues, we've listed our expenses, we've come down to a total net income. Our company's made $59,000. Revenues minus expenses equals net income. And there you have it. There you have a first basic income statement. Next, we'll do statement of 